What makes a movie special? Does a movie need to win awards or be widely recognized as a great film? Or can a movie be special for other reasons, like how relatable it is to the watcher? Living with a mental illness can be tough. Depression can take over your life without you even noticing. There's few feelings worse than going manic and losing control of your life. Not many movies are able to capture this, like 2020's King of Staten Island. Jude Apatow and Pete Davidson come together on this ganja-filled dramedy. This is a story about Scott, a 20-something man-child living at home with his mother as he tries to find his way after the death of his father. Pete Davidson once stated that this is kind of a reimagining of his life if he never got into comedy. This was the inspiration when he was helping write the film. Davidson first came to Apatow's attention while working on Trainwreck after he was recommended by Amy Schumer. He was cast into a cameo role in that film. One thing that makes this movie so great in my eyes is how relatable it is to my own life. Do you guys even really get high anymore? I, I don't really think I get high anymore. I think I just kind of am myself. Kid Cudi once said that and it couldn't be more true about my life. Smoking weed has become almost ritualistic to me. I started smoking after high school and it's been a daily habit ever since. Some would say that I'm addicted and that may be true. I don't even know why I smoke anymore. I have Meniere's disease and it does ease the pain of living with that, but I think it's more of enjoying the lifestyle. I haven't been high in a while, man, but I still do it. I like the lifestyle. Kid Cudi's music literally saved my life after high school. I started dealing with depression at a young age. Later in my life, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. A combination of medication and therapy have helped me get through this and helped me get it under control. I haven't been happier in a long time. This video isn't about me though. It's about Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson has been pretty open about his struggles with mental illness. This is something I always admired about him. In King of Staten Island, his character also struggles with mental illness. In the film's universe, Scott has a close group of friends that help him deal with his issues like his father's death. Friends aren't always the most supportive people in your life. They may be close to you, but there's always someone closer to you. Your family. Like Pete Davidson, Scott too is close to his mother. Even at what seems to be his 30s, Scott is still living with his mother. Yet another thing Scott and Pete have in common. As we've seen in the movie, Scott needs his mother's support to get by. At one point, he gets kicked out and ends up living on the streets. This wouldn't have happened if Scott was able to take care of himself like an adult should be able to. If it wasn't for the kindness of his mother's ex-boyfriend, he wouldn't even have a place to live at all. Due to Scott's mental illness, he is unable to function on his own. From the outside looking in, this just looks like a lazy man living off the backs of others, but that's often what depression looks like. Other people don't have access to your brain. They can't tell how you're feeling without you first telling them. Even then, they only know what you tell them. They can't experience what you are truly feeling. That's what makes mental illness so hard to diagnose. If you cut your hand, you see the blood, you see the scar, you can physically see a wound. That isn't the case for mental illness. There is no physical wound for you to bandage. No one can see the scars but you. Scott has yet to deal with his father's death in a healthy way. Throughout the movie, Scott constantly avoids confronting his feelings. The opening scene, we see Scott driving from his dad's funeral and he turns up the music to distract himself. He refuses to wear his father's suit to his sister's party. He acts out in anger when finding out his mother is dating another firefighter. All examples of Scott avoiding grief. One scene, when they go to a baseball game, you get a peek at how Scott actually feels about his father's death. You don't gotta do this, man. Come on. All right, no. Yeah. On, you know. Okay, how about this? Uh, if you're a fireman, just don't have kids or a family at all, okay? So that way you don't fucking crush them when you don't come home that one time, you know? And, and, and you're just so selfish. You just hang out with your boys all day like it's a fucking frat house. Half the time, you're not even putting out fires. You're just jerking off watching Scarface, okay? All right, take it easy. It's not until after Scott is forced to walk Ray's kids to school that he begins to heal. He finds a purpose in watching over the kids and bonding with them. He finds purpose again when living at the firehouse with Ray. The firefighters keep Scott busy, which distracts him just enough to help him forget about his problems. He also learns about another side of his dad, a side that was more like him. What was he like? 
He was kind of like you. You know, like if you didn't know him, you'd think he was a crack baby. But he was... <laughs> No, but he was a good guy. He was, he was a great guy. He was a great guy. As he learns about his biological father, he gets closer to the emerging father figure in his life, Ray. Due to their circumstances, both end up staying in the firehouse. It's here they begin to bond. Before there was an obvious rift between them, Scott even goes on a mission to try to break him and his mom up. Once Scott experiences what Ray does on a daily basis, he can't help to grow some respect for the man. He starts to see him as a father figure and tries to get his mother to forgive him. The first of multiple endings is a pretty touching scene. When Scott's mom sees the tattoo that he's been working on using Ray's back as a canvas, she can't help but be brought to tears. After this, Scott tries to make things right with Kelsey. Their love story is kind of weak. It took a back seat for most of the film. I wish that they could have focused a little bit more on them. It would have made the final five minutes or so of the movie a lot better. I really liked how they left the ending wide open for you to decide what happens with Scott's life. We have no idea what will happen after the credits roll. You'd like to think that he becomes successful as a tattoo artist and reunites with his friends after they get released from jail. There's always the chance that his dreams don't come true though. That's the mystery of life. I would have much rather seen this movie as a six episode miniseries. I feel like this movie really fits the episodic format better. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the acting in this movie. Bill Burr and Marissa Tomei make a very believable couple. Better known for his stand-up, Bill Burr surprises us with his ability to portray a softer side. I was honestly surprised at the range of Bill Burr. He was awesome in Mandalorian, but he didn't really show us what he did in this movie. Belle Pally plays Kelsey, Scott's love interest, and she is the perfect Staten Island chick. This was my first time seeing her in a movie and I hope to see her in more projects in the future. Even the smaller cameo roles are really well done. My favorite being Action Bronson who appears towards the end of the movie. What happened? Are you okay? Did you get shot? Were you stabbed? It's not really a big deal. My vape exploded in my pocket. Just, I didn't stretch right before yoga. I was playing tennis. I slipped. Well, which, what what do you it? want me to say? It was nothing. I just need some medical attention, he but just by you. Dude, I gotta call 911. I don't know what to do. No, no, no. Listen, listen. No police, please. Not today. What does that even mean? Oh. We don't need to get the government involved into this situation. We can handle this together. Dude, I'm so high. I can't help you right now. I'm high too. King of Staten Island may not have won a ton of awards or be widely recognized as a great movie, but it will always be a special film to me. I've been Mick Berger. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing or leaving a like. Later's on the Ninja.